Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by third-year player from the UBC women's hockey team, Sean Reed Bossi. Uh, Sean Reed, thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast today, and how's everything going? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, everything's good. Just still in season right now. Um, yeah, so I'm just staying busy with school. Too. That's good to hear. And obviously your team finished the regular season at the top of the standings with a 29-4 and four record. Um, how would you evaluate your team's regular season performance uh, this season? Um, yeah, I think we're pretty happy with our regular season. Um, yeah, just going from there, we're just thinking about playoffs now and putting that kind of behind us and making sure that we can carry that into playoffs. And how do you maintain consistency throughout a regular season? Because I think that's one of the biggest, I guess, challenges that a lot of teams have is sort of maintaining winning weekends every weekend. So I'm curious Mm -hmm. what the strategy was like for your team to sort of stay consistent throughout all the pressure you faced and then also just sort of the challenges that goes on with the season with injuries and just exhaustion and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I think our team is really focused on like just trying to stay in the present rather than thinking like too far in the future or just thinking about the past. Um, We work with this like sports psychologist. She comes in like every week and we just have like 20 minute talk before practice and she just like tells us how we just, just little strategies we can do just to stay in the moment and just like not get too ahead of ourselves, especially in like two game weekends when things can change quickly or in the game of hockey when, um, yeah, things happen in seconds. So just like that has helped a lot. Um, and then obviously just experience, I think as the years go on, everyone's understanding like how to work together as a team and just kind of buy into our system. Yeah. What are some of the strategies that you learned from your sports psychologist that has helped you stay in the moment um, during a regular season? Um, I think we just kind of keep it simple, just like talking about, um, like overcoming mistakes or like little things that happen in the game that might frustrate you, how you can just like take it and then move on and not just, um, be too hard on yourself. Now, obviously you guys don't start playoffs until February 24th. So how are you guys preparing for the Canada West uh, semifinals, especially since uh, from just the research I've done, you guys don't know who you're going to play yet. Yeah. um, So we have this week off. uh, Kind of nice to have a break, um, but we kind of usually try to keep practices pretty intense this week. um, And then usually we'll have like an inner squad game on Friday, just so it kind of feels we get a game in as well, just so next weekend going into that semis, we're not feeling off that we had two weeks off. So, yeah. 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 And obviously how do you handle rust? Because uh, as, as an American, it's usually very rare to see teams get a few weeks off in the middle of February. So I'm curious in Canada, how you guys sort of try to not have rust heading into the postseason. Yeah. I think last year, especially we had a lot of weekends where we had off because of that COVID um, COVID break or like, someone got sick we had the weekend off so I think we were used to that just like having those weekends off we just used them and we just played against each other in games and just tried to um, manipulate like a game like situation so we didn't it's it's not too weird when you go back on the ice and you don't feel too rusty which is nice so I think we've just kind of been working like finding our own strategy that's to as for our team to get through like an off weekend now, being a third-year player, what type of leadership have you tried to bring to the team this year? Are you more of a vocal leader or lead-by-example type of player? Mm, I'd say more lead-by-example. Uh, I try not to say too much in the room. I think, uh, especially everyone, like, um, we know what we're going to do when we go on the ice, and if something needs to be said, I'll say it. But, yeah, more just, like, lead-by-example on the ice. And what's been like the biggest improvement you've made to your game so far this year? Mm, probably my biggest improvement would be um, maybe patience with the puck. Uh, just trying to work on that. Just like keeping the puck rather than throwing it away in situations where you can just hold on to it and make a play. That's interesting because I feel like in the college game, it's so much faster that you have to make quicker decisions. So that's kind of... I'm assuming that's got to be somewhat of a challenge to sort of learn patience when the game is mm-hmm. much faster. Yeah, yeah. 
especially just like finding the right situations to be patient with it and the right situations to move the puck. Okay. Yeah, one interesting thing that I noticed from your team this year is you guys are undefeated at home this year. Uh, what's led to your team's success at home and what makes that building so tough to play in for opposing teams? Um, yeah, I think we do do well at home. Uh, I think the main kind of part of that success, I would say, was just like having our routine at home, being used to like our kind of home ice. We do have like a bigger barn than like normal teams. Um, it's like a 5,000 seating rink. So obviously a huge area. Um, yeah, I think we're just used to it. I think we just like take it to our advantage. Now, I want to transition and talk about the beginning of your hockey career and kind of work all the way up to where you are today. Uh, mm -hmm. So doing research on yourself, it says that you're from Kelowna, British Columbia. So talk about growing up there and how did you start playing hockey? Yeah, so um, I started playing hockey because of my brother. He's like a year, year and a half older than me. So, yeah, we didn't have any girls teams at all. So I played boys hockey until Bantam second year. So I played a bit of hitting. Um yeah, just like kind of followed my brother's footsteps. I played with him for one year. Um, yeah, boys hockey. And then I transitioned into girls, played Bantam first year girls, and then Bantam second year boys, and then Midget played girls at an academy. And talk about, I guess, the transition from boys to girls hockey, because I'm obviously getting into the places you played in before uh, UBC, but is that transition sort of seamless from boys to girls, or is it a little bit more difficult, especially since, I guess, in girls hockey, it's not as physical as boys? Yeah, I'd say it's for sure very different. Um, I really enjoyed boys hockey and playing it growing up, because I think there's certain aspects of my game that I think if I played girls growing up, maybe I wouldn't have, like, grit or just like I don't know even just like learning from the guys around me and like um how they play it's definitely a different type of game um the transition was like different but I felt like it was like seamless kind of a bit to girls hockey yeah and any big hits that you've accidentally made uh, in juniors because of that transition because I feel like a lot of Girls mm -hmm. hockey players that played uh, boys with hitting, usually that's something that they have to adjust to is not throwing out those big yeah. hits. I don't know if you've had that experience at all. Yeah, definitely. I think sometimes you just got to be careful um, with that transition because then, yeah, with the hitting, I found I did use the body sometimes. What's the biggest hit that you've ever had in your career? On me or against me? Uh, both, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I remember in like Bantam, I think I got, I got, I hit this guy from behind, I think kind of bad, but my, I got kicked out and I don't know, my dad kind of thought it was funny because it's just like, usually it's like the guys would be always be against me from the other team and just try to hit me because I was a girl, but I don't know, this time I hit one of them and got kicked out. So I thought that was kind of funny, but. Now, who was your favorite player growing up? Uh, was it someone in the NHL or was it a women's player in the national team? Mm, uh, I would say, like, I really like Sidney Crosby, obviously. Like, I tried to get, like, the same gear as him, but probably, like, Brendan Gallagher. I like how he, like, always played, like, gritty in front of the net. Yeah. He's also from British Columbia, too, so that's kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, talk about your experiences before college hockey. Um, just doing research, it said that you played for Delta Hockey Academy and the Pursuit of Excellence School. Uh, so talk about your experiences there and how'd you start playing? How'd you get, I guess, how'd you get the opportunity to go to both those uh, programs? Yeah, so I think my grade 11 year, um, the year before that, I played at a major midget team that was just like local in um, Kelowna, the Okanagan area. Um, and I felt like, Maybe I needed to like move on from that league and try try to get into a more competitive league to get recruited. Um, and I decided that that year that Delta was the best fit just because financially it worked and then um, also it was a good place to live. Um, and I had family that I could live with. So yeah, that was a great experience. Um, I think that was like the second year I went into the prep division. So we weren't we weren't very good, but at the same time, also a really good experience because they have a really good setup there with like their gym, their ice sheets, all in like the same place. So 
it was a great place to like for me to develop as a player I think. And what led to the transition to uh, Pursuit of Excellence uh, the following year? Um, yeah so after that year I I'm actually from so I moved to Lake Country now which is just like 20 minutes outside of Kelowna and that's where the Pursuit of Excellence is based out of um, and I had multiple friends that were on that team so I thought like my grade 12 year I, I wanted to go play there um, love the coach there Chris and I thought it was like the right fit for me just because also that that group team that I eventually played on in grade 12 had like 14 grade 12 players so graduating players so it was pretty special. Now talk about how playing for Delta and Pursuit of Excellence School helped prepare you for college hockey with UBC. Uh, yeah it definitely prepared me I think like the part it's really prepared me is just like time management with like having hockey in the morning for like half the day and then like having school and then going home and trying to like fit homework into there. I think it was like kind of easier coming into university and being able to like balance hockey and school. And what's the best memory you have from your junior hockey days? Oh, uh, probably winning CSSHL in grade 12. Yeah. And also doing some research, you got to play with some really incredible players uh, before your time at uh, UBC. It says that you played with Rachel Weiss, who's now with Providence, Danielle Sardakny, who's with Colgate, and Tegan Ingalls, who's with Merrimack. I'm curious, what was it like being those players' teammates, and what should you learn about hockey as a developing as a hockey player, playing with those incredible players that I mentioned? Yeah, like those are all great players. I think we definitely had some great times on the ice um, and off the ice. Um, most of them we still talk to this day. Um, yeah, just awesome players. I definitely developed um, just watching them, even when you're in practice and seeing like kind of what they do and then trying to implement it in my own game. I think they all bring like different kind of qualities that you can pick apart and try to put it into your game so yeah they're all great players and enjoyed playing with them so much so I I still try to watch them when I can or keep up to date with how they're doing. How cool was it to see Danielle play for the national team a couple months ago? Yeah I think that's awesome for her I'm really happy she definitely deserves that opportunity um, she's such a great player and um, has a great hockey IQ so it was coming for her and I think well deserved yeah and I think Tegan and Rachel are one of the more underrated players in women's hockey like I had the chance to watch Tegan play last year and there was a chance where the team was trying to get an empty net goal and she made a great hustle play and saved it from happening which I thought was pretty awesome and then I think Rachel is a great two-way player uh, so that must yeah. have been nice to get the chance to play with those girls and obviously I feel like they make you a better player as well yeah, no, it was awesome. I think that team we had in grade 12, it was, we only lost a few games and I think we definitely like that most of those girls went like NCAA or U sports and are doing like great on their team. So we had a strong team that year and it's great to see that they're doing good on their teams. Now talk about your recruiting process to UBC. Uh, what made you want to go there for so other schools you might have looked at and why did you choose that school at the end of the day? Yeah, um, so I committed to UBC in the end of my grade 11 year. Um, initially, I didn't know if I wanted to go with youth sports. I was kind of like only considering NCAA schools. Um, and then I think um, the coach didn't reach out to me directly. I think my parents were at like the playoff games that we had in Penticton at the end of that year. And he asked me to come for a visit. Um, I wasn't too keen on it at first because I was like, I don't know if I want to go there. Like, I want to go Division One um, because I don't know. As like a high school student, it was like Division One, Division One. Um, but then I decided to go tour UBC, and like as soon as I stepped on campus, I was like, this is amazing. Um, just like the most beautiful campus, great coaches, great teammates. Um, great hockey program and like the staff here is awesome like there weren't many things to be like wow I don't like this school um I think especially the main like thing that kind of drove me here was like the academics it's like one of the top universities that's close to home so it was kind of a 
no brainer. I thought about it for a few weeks and I thought it was just like the perfect fit for me. What was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the speed of the game, uh, the physicality, or just uh, the decision-making? Because obviously the game's moving much faster, so you have to make quicker decisions with the puck, especially with board battles and things like that. Yeah, I think biggest adjustment for me was just like transitioning to a different type of game. Like in high school, it was like almost like more of a skilled type of game. And then when I moved to U sports, it was still skilled, but it was just like, a different type of game than what I was used to, like more defensive. So I think I really had to adjust my defensive game and like kind of be a 200 foot player rather than like just offensive. So I think that's where I'm trying to make strides in my defensive game and, and my offensive as well. Now, during your first year, your in, during your first year of playing uh, with UBC, uh, you won your first playoff series in the quarterfinals beating University of Saskatchewan. Um, mm -hmm. two games in overtime um, what did you take away from your first playoff series win that has helped you out uh, for your next few years uh, playing college hockey yeah I think that year was um, was kind of a struggle for us but going into that playoff series um, I didn't play too much but just from the bench like you just kind of learn how like the older players um, played and like tried to taken as much as I could from that so I think that playoff series was definitely like just like a learning curve and like seeing like how playoff hockey is played and like what you need to do to win games and obviously how did you sort of mentally handle that because I was looking through your schedule and it said that you had like four straight overtimes um in that first year so I'm curious sort of what was the mental challenge like for that yeah that was a crazy year I think um both of those series were played away. So we had to fly back to back weekends. Um, definitely was a grind, especially after Saskatchewan and playing Alberta and having to go to like double OT and triple overtime with like zero, zero games. You're just trying to get by. Um, it was definitely like a defensive battle. And I think we were exhausted after that series. I remember that, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely um, just a lesson. Like even when we got eliminated, I remember against like Alberta, I think I was on the ice and we made like a bad defensive play in getting the puck out and then they went and scored on us. So like we still have that in the back of our heads when we play them and just, I think we kind of learned from that how, how to play off the puck and make sure like when you're on the ice to be aware and yeah, do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Now, during your second season, um, it, the season was pretty much canceled due to the pandemic. I'm curious how you handled that challenge, not having a season, and what would you do uh, to train and get yourself ready for the first games of the 2021-22 season the following year? Yeah, um, I think it was obviously upsetting not having a season. Personally, uh, I had a groin injury, so I would not have played most of that season, even if it did happen. So in a way that COVID year was, was nice for me because I got to recover my groin. Um, and that took like five months. So I hadn't skated in like, I think it was like eight to 10 months after that kind of COVID cancellation. So for me, yeah, I was just like trying to find a way to work back and focus on next season, which was really nice because I had this whole year to like do that. So, um, but at the same time, it was like you wanted to play games as well. Yeah, but at least, at least you can take the positive out of it. Like even if uh, basically the games that you would have missed, uh, you wouldn't have played anyway. So it's yeah. sort of like that mindset. It's easy to have that mindset, I feel like, when that's going on. Yeah, yeah. And I think things happen for a reason. So I was kind of grateful that I was able to recover from that. And talking to a lot of players from Canada, they said they struggled like getting ice time and training just because of the restrictions. I'm curious if you faced similar challenges and if you did sort of, how did you navigate those? Um, we were during that COVID year. Yeah. Just in general, even during okay. the off season. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure we were one of the only teams in Canada that still got to practice every day. Um, obviously if someone got sick, like no one would be on the ice, but yeah, we still had full access to like the gym, ice, um, 
I think the only thing that was different was like on the ice we couldn't play like games which was weird like we have to um, do a lot of different drills which was also beneficial because that year we did like a lot of skills drills like a lot of passing just like working on our shooting deception I and I think like we got to focus on that area of our game which really helped going into that next year. Now your team improved significantly from your first year to last season uh, going mm -hmm. from a below 500 team to a team that won 24 games I'm curious, what did your team work on to make those improvements from your first season uh, to last season and now? Uh, I honestly think it just started from after that. After my first year going into that COVID year, we got six new freshmen, kind of like a team that was like basically like first and second years made up like half of the team. Like, And then going into that year, we're just like, we have nothing to lose kind of like, let's just work hard every day and um we didn't really have like expectations to go win this or win that we're coming off like a season where we didn't win many games um so going into like my third year we just we worked really well as a team um I think in a way like COVID kind of made us be closer because all we had during that year we could only see each other so um we just became really close and like even off the ice we're like best friends so made it easy on the A's. Now, last year, your team won the Canada West final uh, when you scored the only goal and in overtime, nonetheless. Uh, talk about the emotions of winning uh, that game and what was it like scoring that OT winner? Um, yeah, definitely, like, such an amazing moment. We, there's, I didn't ever think we would ever win. Um, after that first year, we're just, we just kind of worked hard every day. Um, I don't know. I just, I, that moment was special, definitely. Um, but yeah, I think our whole team kind of came together that weekend. Um, just kind of lucky that it was me. It could have been anyone on our team scoring that goal. So um, just, yeah, super grateful. I think what made it crazy for me was there was no goals scored throughout the entire regulation. And then like a minute into overtime, you scored that goal, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the crazy part of that was um, all regulation. We didn't go into overtime either or the playoffs. So that that game was like our first overtime game that we played. So it was like kind of weird for us. But at the same time, like throughout the season, our coaches, we always do like four on four, three on three and end of practices. So it didn't feel too weird going into that. And obviously the photo is incredible. You have the biggest smile on your face and you're getting bear hugged by one of your teammates. I'm curious, mm -hmm. uh, what's it like staring at that picture of you scoring that OT winner? That's probably going to be one of the best hockey photos you ever have. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Uh, I think you just like kind of in the moment, I'm just like, what's going on? Because um, I don't know. I didn't think I could score that, but it happened. So it was a pretty exciting moment. Do you guys get to keep the trophy uh, when you win it? Or is it one of those things where you have to give back at the beginning of the season? Um, I think we kept it, yeah, until the beginning of the season. But we had it, yeah, for the summer and stuff. That's cool. Did you get, like, a day with the trophy? Or is or you don't get to do that at all? No, no, we don't do that. But, like, yeah, it, was, it just sat in our dressing room for a while all summer. And, yeah, it was nice to have. Well, you then got to play in the U Sports Championship. Uh, even though the first game didn't go your team's way, uh, what did you take away from that experience being at Prince Edward Islands? And how do you think that experience just has helped you out for this year, especially since you're going into the Canada West playoffs and you have a chance to be back in the U Sports Championship again this season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was like a huge learning curve for us. Uh, going into that game, we were um, def we were seated higher. We were supposed to beat them, but Obviously, the game didn't go that way. Um, I think one thing we really struggled with that year was uh, learning to win away games and finishing out weekends um, and going into that weekend just, like, not in our own barn, learning how to play in a different environment we struggled with at times. So I think, yeah, we've been trying to work on, like, um, in away games, like, having a routine similar to what we have here and um seeing if that works and just 
honestly gaining experience going to nationals as well. We hadn't been for four years. So just having that experience and just getting a grip to like how it kind of worked. Um, I think we can kind of have an idea of it now. So, which is nice. I was going all the way across the country to Prince Edward Island. Uh, what was uh, just being there? That must've been, it seems like a cool place. I've never been there before. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was um, definitely a long flight for us. <laughs> definitely like five, six hours. So, um, but no, it was a great week. We had, we had a lot of fun, just this great little town, um, of Charlottetown and yeah. So we're now in a segment I like to call the non-hockey segment where I ask you some non-hockey questions just so we can get to know you a little bit more off the ice. Mm-hmm. So first question is, what music do you like to listen to? Um, I like a mix of like country or, yeah, mostly country, I'd say. Nice. Uh, any artists you're into currently? Uh, Kip Moore or Morgan Wallen, obviously. Big one there. That's awesome. I'm excited for his new album uh, coming up in, a, I think, a few weeks now. Yeah, yeah. No, I just listened to his new song, I think, last night very good song so yeah that's definitely that's definitely a good uh jam nonetheless i think it i think the thing is i'm hoping there's like some country songs there as well because that one felt a little poppy to me yeah yeah now getting again back to the next question uh, what is your most embarrassing hockey moment have you ever been checked uh ankles broken or uh, anything along those lines mm, like maybe when i was little when you like leave your like skate guards on your skates for, like go out on the ice like fall probably that but when i was little wish you did when you were little not like in college i feel like i'll be a little more embarrassing um when you're older for sure yeah i can't think of anything college yeah probably that yeah i guess for me we were doing like backward skating drills when i was a kid on the blue line and someone forgot to close the bench door and i wasn't paying attention i fell right in so that was that was kind of a tough moment for your oh yeah yeah now, what is the most overrated holiday and what is the most underrated holiday? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, overrated, Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, underrated. Have you seen Patrick's Day? Actually, it's kind of, a, no, yeah, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you with the overrated part for Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it just seems a little too commercialized for me. I feel like yeah. it's not like like a day of love yeah um, and then underrated at least here in the u.s probably fourth of july it's just always fun to get together with family and friends and have a nice barbecue i'm assuming it's the same thing for canada on canada day so that's always yeah. a fun holiday for me yeah awesome. uh what is the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week mm. i've never seen i think like uh what's the news article about like the balloons by, oh yeah yeah uh, I don't know I kind of was not interested but like it's interesting to see what's going on yeah I guess for me it's sort of similar just the UFO stuff that's been going on yeah. I just I feel like there's definitely something out there um and I feel <laughs> like maybe there's something that people aren't telling us so I, I'm just pretty interested to see how that's all gonna play itself oh yeah. it's gonna play itself out yeah I know the UFO one I was like oh what's going on here but uh, they definitely know more than we. They're telling us. That's I. I. I I'm pretty sh- positive about that, based on what <laughs> I was reading. No, literally. If there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play yourself? Oh, um, that's like similar to me, or anyone. Uh, just anyone, whatever you want. Maybe like Rihanna. <laughs> that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if I would do a singer actor, probably like one of the Jonas Brothers, I think that would be pretty cool uh, for sure. for them yeah. to play me. So even though I don't think I look anything like I don't really look like any of them, so that would be kind of <laughs> tough. But I think it would just be cool to say that like yeah. Nick Jonas played you in a movie or something like that. Yeah, no, that would be cool. Uh, who has the best style on your hockey team besides yourself? Mm, probably Mackenzie Kordak. Yeah. And then last non-hockey question is, uh, who is the funniest on the team? Funniest? Uh, I could say a lot of people. I'd go with, like, Ireland Parrott, the sixth-year forward. 
she's pretty funny. Don't tell her I said that school, but when she listens, she'll hear it. So I don't need to say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, getting back to some hockey questions now. First one is, uh, what advice would you give uh, a younger player listening to this podcast on what it takes to make it to college hockey? Um, my advice would be just like based on my like kind of recruiting process is, don't be too focused on um, teams just because of like the gear they get or like um, I don't know if they're a Big Ten team or like how much they win like. Um, if you want to choose like a school, uh, make sure you like look at like the culture of the team, like um, the kind of girls on the team, if they like fit your personality or if you think you would fit in. Um, also, just like academically, like if you can see yourself um, in like a program at the school, I think there's like so many other things that go into recruiting that people don't consider until they get there and they find that it's not their fit. So I think just be super open-minded with any coach that approaches you because you never know it could be the perfect fit. Now, uh, what should be done to help grow women's hockey in your opinion? Um, I think women's hockey needs to be broadcasted more like on TV, especially like I find our games are like nowhere to be seen, but um, even like on TSN or something, because that way it's like, um, people just like to watch what's at their reach. So if they see like a women's game on TV, I I'm sure they would try to watch it. So. Yeah, definitely. I feel like is the youth sport like championship that weekend, is that broadcasted on TV or no? I think it was like on CBC last year. So I think it was. That's but, good. Yeah. I don't remember. Well, hopefully they continue to broadcast more games because that's the one thing we here in the USA is, it's they don't broadcast like the actual championship game like on like a network where people like have it you have to like sort of pay for that cable channel so i hope that uh hopefully like they keep like i said try to give it more access because like you said people will flip through channels and then like watch part of it which i think helps grow the sport in a little bit in little ways yeah yeah for sure i think that's definitely one way to start well any shout outs you want to give uh, to any of your teammates, family members, friends, or anyone that might be listening, uh, feel free to give them a shout out. Uh, I don't know, maybe like my parents, because they do so much for me. So probably them. Other than that, yeah, that's probably it. Well, any guests that we should have on in the future, feel free to give us any suggestions if you might have any. Uh, yeah, I'd say like anyone on my team, they, they're all awesome. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Shan Reed, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate your time. I wish mm -hmm. you and your team nothing but the best uh, for the rest of this season. And then obviously the, for the rest of your collegiate career, I know you're going to do great things on and off the ice. And it was a pleasure getting the chance to meet and talk with you today. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Now, one question I 